Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm a PhD student here at Newcastle University and I study biomedical engineering. I design different elements of prosthetic arms for amputees. I'm Sarah Walker and I work at Newcastle University as a reader in energy and I'm director of the Centre for Energy at Newcastle University. Hello, um, my name is Fernando and I'm a lecturer in chemical engineering at School of Engineering in Newcastle University. I lecture a range of courses and I do um, research on catalysis for um, uh, conversion of biomass uh, into renewable fuels and chemicals and conversion of CO2 into fuels and chemicals as well. My name is Choma Udiozo and I am a researcher at Newcastle University School of Engineering. I'm looking into the use of video games, virtual reality and augmented realities for engineering education in general to make it more fun and more authentic. Hi, I'm Liz Lewis. I'm a lecturer in computational hydrology in the School of Engineering at Newcastle University. Hydrology is the study of water. So we look at everything from um, the rain and how rainfall is changing and extremes in rainfall to how water moves around the earth. We also look at um, kind of extremes in water availability, so droughts and floods. Hello everyone, I'm Mariam Hartunian and I am a naval architect with specific interests in uh, marine hydrodynamics. So that is how a ship, a submarine, an offshore structure or an autonomous underwater vehicle will interact with the environment and will move. Did you always want to be an engineer and if not, what did you want to do when you were younger? No, I didn't always want to be an engineer. Um, I actually didn't even know what an engineer was until I was about 16, 17. I wanted to be a chemist, I wanted to be a doctor, um, because I wanted to help people mainly. That, that's sort of, that's what I wanted to do as a job, but I didn't realise that engineers could do that. Um, and it was only once I discovered that like biomedical engineering was a thing when I was like 16 and that you could design things to help people um, in a similar way to doctors do, but from a, like an engineering perspective, like I could use the creativity and the math skills that I had and apply that and actually help people. That's sort of what drove me towards engineering. It was actually really like last minute decision. Um, I'd never even considered it before then because I hadn't heard of it. When I was really young, I wanted to be a ballerina. Then I wanted to be an artist. Then I wanted to be a witch. Then um, I wanted to be a computer programmer. And it wasn't till I was doing my O-levels that I really fell in love with physics um, and uh, stuck with that as a subject. So I did physics at O-level, physics at A-level, physics at university, and I'm now applying that physics understanding to the context of energy systems. I first wanted to be an astronaut when I was three because um, someone offered me a space rocket and I found it pretty cool. <laughs> and I think then I went through, um, wanted to be an architect and wanted to be a doctor. And then I think when I was about 11, the Indiana Jones movies were very popular. So I wanted to be an archaeologist. And then when I started my chemistry before my GCSEs, when I discovered chemistry at that stage and uh, and turned to the chemical engineering as a profession and then since then I've been following. I've always wanted to be um, in the science domain but I wasn't at the beginning I didn't, didn't know where exactly it was going to be so growing up at the time I grew up and where I grew up if you're going to the science field it has uh, it's the, the, the two you know programs or the two places you would end up is being a doctor or being an engineer and I didn't want to be a doctor. I didn't like biology. I felt it had so much reading to do. And but I liked math. So I really enjoyed math. And I felt okay with my, with, um, my love for math and um, the skills required for engineering, math being one of the strongest, I, I went for engineering. I've always wanted to be a scientist. So when I was in primary school, my best friend was allergic to nuts and I decided that I was going to come up with a cure for nut allergies. Um, but then as I got older, I started getting really interested in the environment and I decided that water is really essential to how we live. And so um, 
there's always going to be a need for having adequate water resources and climate change is really threatening that so um, I shifted gears also I was horrible at biology I couldn't remember anything so <laughs> um, uh, yeah so I ended up doing hydrology because I thought it was a useful thing to study. I have always had an interest in um, engineering uh, in general so um, I've always had bits and pieces of wires and uh, breadboards you know electronic breadboards that you can basically create your own kits uh, circuits on um, and um, I've always been quite lucky that my parents were really supportive. Um, I remember sometime in primary school, I asked for a toolbox uh, for my birthday because um, I didn't want to keep on using all the tools that we had at home and I wanted to have my own bit. So I got a toolbox with a little soldering iron and um, you know, different things I could use. Um, so I've always had that interest. I, I would get really excited if I would go um, under our car with my father to have a look at what, whatever we were changing that day. Um, so yeah, um, I guess I've always had an interest in engineering in specific. So um, I didn't actually know that a topic such as marine technology existed until really close to when I was applying to university, but I've always had a lot of interest. How did you become an engineer? What was your career pathway? I took quite an unconventional route to, I guess, where I am now. So, first of all, I did my GCSEs as a homeschooled child. I was homeschooled before, like COVID made like homeschooling like a sort of like a well-known thing. Um, so, I was out of school. I did my GCSEs in, independently, uh, sat them at school, and then I went to a normal college. So, I went to like a sixth form and did like biology, chemistry, maths and geography, which are not really sort of traditional A-levels if you're going to go into engineering because usually you'd expect like physics in there. Um, but luckily there are a few universities who take um, students who don't have physics for engineering degrees. Newcastle is one of them. Um, so I was very lucky in that respect because it was the university I wanted to go to anyway. Um, and then I did my degree in mechanical engineering um, and then went on to do what I'm doing now, which is biomedical engineering and sort of skipped the master's year, which is again, unconventional. So I had a bit of a, an odd path to where I'm at now, but I'm really glad because I like where I'm at. After A-level, I went to university and studied physics at Leicester University. And um, I still wasn't sure what I wanted to, to do with that degree once I'd finished it, but I had a real passion for physics. So I decided to do a teaching qualification. So I became a qualified teacher by doing a post-grad certificate in education, it's called PGCE. And then I um, taught physics for a little while. And while I was doing that, I was doing lots of voluntary work for Leicester Friends of the Earth. I was still living in Leicester. And I got really, um, motivated, enthused, engaged about issues around energy and industrial pollution that I was learning by being part of Friends of the Earth and so I decided to um, go and do a Masters in Environmental Science to learn more about that. So I did a Masters degree and um, after that I got my first research job at a university doing research on wind energy technologies and that's where I really got into renewable energy in that first job. So I was at that university for seven years and um, as part of that research journey they offered me an opportunity to do a part-time PhD while I was um, paid as a researcher which was great I got um, I had a job and I got to do a PhD so I did a part-time PhD over five years and that was all about renewable energy um, and that was um, great but after that um, eight years in the university I found that universities are a bit slow a bit bureaucratic so I thought I'd give industry a try and I was out in industry for five years and it's a very different dynamic environment working in renewable energy in industry so I was doing work on wind farms and um, planning doing some research on new technologies for energy networks um, and after five years of that I definitely found that I was lacking that learning new things element that I said really motivated me and which I really like about my job. So I went back into academia 
um, and so I've been in academia since 2007. I've been doing research since then, teaching, um, taught on lots of different programs and done some different leadership roles throughout that time, running small groups, leading on research, leading on business engagement for the university and now I lead a centre for energy and I have three big research projects. I've then went to do an A-level um, and done maths and chemistry because that was um, the requirements for studying chemical engineering at university. Um, I've also done physics, um, which wasn't essential, but was a good help. Uh, lots of people for chemical engineering also do biology because uh, chemical engineers work in biotechnology a lot. So that's also useful. Um, then I went to do uh, integrated master degree. I'm from Portugal, so I've done that at University of Coimbra in Portugal. And uh, I studied chemical engineering. Uh, I could have gone in industry after that, but I wanted to specialize into catalysis and, and look at other things. I had quite like my final year research projects and design projects when I was doing my, my masters. Um, so I then came to Cambridge and I've done a PhD in catalysis and magnetic resonance. And then I went to study in industry, I went to work in industry in terms of my postdoctoral research and then moved to academia afterwards to become a lecturer. I started off as uh, studying chemical engineering for my bachelor's degree in Nigeria. And after I graduated, I came to Liverpool to do a master's in operations and supply chain management. So it's all industry related. And um, after that, I spent two years as a researcher in Istanbul in a field of learning sciences. And that's after that, I, I, I ended up at Newcastle University and I've been here for just less than, a, less than two years. I um, really liked maths and science at school. I really liked music as well, um, but I thought I wanted to be a scientist. Um, so I did um, lots of science and lots of maths for my A-levels. And then I went to Cambridge and studied natural sciences there. And I thought I was going to do chemistry and kind of atmospheric chemistry. Um, but then I did geology there, which I'd never even thought of as a subject. Um, and it was so interesting and so fun and kind of made you look at the world on really different uh, timescales and in a different way um, that I ended up kind of doing geology. And then that's kind of at university when I decided that I was really interested in doing water. Um, and then I went and worked for a year at a um, county council as a flood and management project officer. So. There was this new bit of law that had been made that said that um, county councils now had a responsibility to um, manage flooding in their own areas. So I went and worked there for a year to get some experience working in water and floods. And then I came to Newcastle to do a PhD in hydrology. Um, and that was all about how climate change is going to affect water in the UK. And then I've stayed at Newcastle doing research ever since. So when I was applying for university, um, by that time I knew that it was definitely engineering that I wanted to do. But my problem was I didn't want to choose between one and the other. So I had a lot of interest in machines at the same time. I really liked electronics at the same time. I had some interests in design. So I really wanted to do something that would give me all of this. Um, and it was to some extent by luck that I found this um, area of engineering and I realized oh ships a submarine a standalone structure that you need to look at it uh, in a more or less holistic way so you need to look at it from the point of design and stability and it moves and it has an engine and there are cables and you need to control it and you need to make sure the structure stands so there's a bit of structure in there and that's how I choose and I did my first degree in um, in marine technology so mine was um, uh, rather a dual degree between marine engineering and naval architecture so I did a bit of both and then I went on to do a master's degree in naval architecture because I, I am more interested in motions and marine hydrodynamics and uh, so on and then uh, 
I was really lucky that I got sponsored by the EPSRC, uh, Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, to do my doctorate degree in bioinspiration to improve the performance of autonomous underwater vehicles. After I finished my doctorate degree, I became a research associate and looked uh, more specifically researched on um, damaged uh, vessels. So uh, this, the structure of damaged vessel and progressive collapse of vessels. And then after that, um, for a short period of time, I was a teaching fellow and then a position came up and I applied to become a lecturer.